Today we're going to look at an advanced version of the uh, basing techniques that I showed you in the last video. I'm going to be using this guy, a bit of a change to the last one. He's a Ten Thunders Archer from Weird Miniatures. Uh, really nice looking miniature, well sculpted, well designed, nice assembly and fits in really well in any sort of fantasy or even medieval Japanese or near future style game. So I really like that one. We're mostly going to be focusing however on the base today. Uh, this is the base that came with the miniature. As you can see, it's a 30mm round lip slotter base from Weird Games themselves. I've already taken the liberty of filling the slot with milliput and a little bit of milliput on the top. Uh, this has been left to cure for plenty of time, so that's nice and hard already. Now, what we're looking to do today is to put this miniature onto this base in a more dramatic fashion. So, we put him to one side. Number of options could use actual slate, that is rock, uh, really simple to use, it glues easily, uh, it even drills and if you use clippers can be shut down, so we just glue it onto the top of the base here, and if I wanted to I would then glue my archer right on top of that rock, and it gives quite a dramatic appearance and has the advantage of weighing down the base because it is, after all, rock. However, we're not going to use that today. We are, in fact, going to use this. Uh, this is a champagne cork, because I am that pimp. Uh, however, uh, we're not going to use the whole cork. Obviously, we're going to need to cut it up. And number of options. This is the most obvious. Standard hobby knife. This is the uh, old Citadel hobby knife. They've got a new version, but I like this old one for control. But for this kind of work, I really favour the good old-fashioned... 99E Stanley Knife. Uh, I love this blade. It's heavy duty, hard wearing and perfect for non-precision hobby work like this. So we're going to cut this up and end up with some nice cork chunks. Here we go. I've got four cork chunks that I'm going to use to build the rock pillar on this base. Uh, and the advantage of using the Stanley Knife is I've also got a load of little offcuts that we're also going to use. Now there are a number of ways that I could be fixing these pieces to the base, but I'm going to go in a sort of pyramidal shape. One, two, three, and four. It's a nice, nice little rock pillar. And put our archer perched up on the top there, like he's looking down, surveying the battlefield, or just ready to shoot someone through the eye. Now when it comes to actually affixing the cork, there are lots of options. This is the one I'm going to go for today, uh, Zappagap Medium Cyanoacrylate. Uh, I rate this super glue as good value and highly effective. A little bit of wicking, but not too much, hence the medium rather than the thin. You could also use PVA glue, uh, at least for gluing the cork to itself, uh, if you're prepared to wait a while for that to set. You could also use something like a two-part epoxy resin or even hot glue from a hot glue gun. Um, there are downsides and upsides with all of them. I favour the super glue because it's neat, uh, it's quick, uh, and it provides a nice, strong, but slightly flexible bond that gives the sort of tabletop strength and rigidity that you're looking for for a miniature that's intended for wargaming, even if it is hopefully going to look like a display model by the time it's finished. So I'll just pop the last little bit on the top. The other advantage with the super glue is it does slightly soak into the cork, which means that once I press it all down, it will bond really quickly and really strong. A certain amount of stretch and give in the cork, but a couple of minutes later it is nicely set. But we're not finished, because we've got those little offcut bits. I'm going to add some more super glue around the edge. Because just a standing alone rocky pillar looks a bit silly. Uh, usually a rock pillar like this is going to be a part of a larger rock formation and this just gives a sense of context. There we go. All those pieces glued nicely into place. Oop. Nicely into place. So you can see we've got the rock. However, 
lumps of random rock just sitting on a base doesn't actually look all that good. So, back to our old friend. Milliput Yellow Grey that I used in the first video and my nice metal sculpting tool. I have split this into several small pieces of Milliput because I'm going to affix these at random spots around the base. And I'll just put some water on my sculpting tool and I'm going to press those into the base so that they surround and envelop the small pieces uh, that I've stuck to the base and they sort of hug up to the rock pillar in the center. And this represents the natural transition of the earth up and around the pillar itself. Tidy off the edges. So the next stage, uh, having done the ground level, I'm going to need these other pieces because one of the problems with using several flattish lumps of cork to make your rock pillar is that there is a tendency for them to look like several flattish lumps of cork. And using some sort of putty to fill in some of where the gaps exist between those lumps and also to, to make the transition from one level to another a little bit more subtle is a really good way to make it stop looking like a pile of pieces of cork and make it actually start looking like that pile of rock that we want our arch to be standing on. Looking good. Just tidying up a couple of bits of the edge here. This has taken me uh, six or seven minutes. Obviously I have skipped through the process for your benefit, but it really isn't time consuming. There is our finished rock pillar. And that would be more or less fine on its own. However, I do like to take another step. We're going to use uh, this baby. This is a Citadel miniature drill or pin vise. Um, they've also replaced this one with a new design, but I like the comfort and control of this old one. And I'm going to drill down inside the cork. Now, you do want to be careful here because the drill drills really easily to the cork. Nice soft wood cork, doesn't present any kind of resistance, but once you get down to the bottom, if you just pull the drill out, there is still a possibility that you could actually just rip your cork apart. So rather than pull it out, I am going to very gently rotate it out again. There we go. So we've got a hole going down through the center, and I'm going to use this. It's a piece of wire. It used to be a paper clip. I've just straightened it out with some pliers. And I'm going to shove this right down the middle of the rock formation. This has two uses. First is it makes it really strong. Obviously I've got lots of wire off the top. So I'm going to use the side cutters to remove all but a couple of millimeters at the top because that is relevant for the second use. And you should be able to see, if we have a look at this closely, we've just got a couple of millimeters of wire sticking out the top. So the wire all the way down through the middle makes the whole structure really strong and those couple of millimeters on the top, they'll be enough for us to position our archer with some wire up in his foot. Now I have started this already because I wanted to make sure that I could put a hole in this foot without destroying the foot live on camera. Uh, but I've only made a guide hole and that seems to be fine. So let's see if I can finish it off without it going horribly wrong. Now it's a fast forward just to save you a couple of seconds. I promise I didn't have to rush out and buy a new one. Uh, this really is the one I started drilling before. But there we go. Look, fits on nicely. In fact, I think if I put him down, there should be enough wire now up in his foot that, yeah, he'll stand up just fine without me even needing to hold him. However, I can't resist, so I'm going to press on and finish him off so he's glued up on the top there. More super glue. Got to be super glue here. and fit him on the top. I'll just hold him for a couple of seconds. Start the setting process. Although actually, of course, because he will stand up on his own, I can just put him down. And he should set quite comfortably without me needing to hold him any further. And that's just brilliant.
So we're going to finish this guy off now. Back to the palette, we've got some PVA glue on here. And you'll remember last time that I put some milliput on the base. That's now had plenty of time to set. It's nice and hard, but just smooth milliput is a bit of a giveaway, a bit of a distraction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some extra texture around the base just to represent loose rock, sand, dirt, earth, that kind of thing. Again, this is all about giving context to the model, trying to give the impression that this is actually part of a landscape, not just something that has been knocked up on my hobby table. So having added all the PVA I need to quite carefully, trying to keep as much of it as possible off the base, put this aside and come back to our old friend, the mixed sand. As I said last time, this is just builder's sharp sand mixed with floor sweepings or desk sweepings, anything that isn't actually going to rot. And we just give that a good dip in there. Yep, all the way around, make sure we get all the PVA covered with sand. Give it a good tap to get the excess off, and we can put our sand aside. Now, it was a bit harder to keep all the sand off the edge of the base, partly because this was a round edge base, and that is harder, and partly just because the base is that much more complex. Uh, so I have got some sand on the base, I just want to scrape off now with a thumb to make sure that this guy is absolutely finished and smooth. There we go. A little bit closer to you. Dramatically posed on the top of his rock pillar.